here we are at the Montreal melon patch. The vines is on its way out. There's not really much more greenery. Uh, I don't really see new growth. All the old one is getting dry. But today we're gonna harvest the first one that is that one right there. I could see it this morning from here I could see that it's ready. Uh, you can see the outside that start to look ready. I do prefer to harvest and half slip, what is called half slip, when you force a little the, the, uh, the melon to slip from the vine. Uh, if you harvest the Montreal melon, that full slip is really smooshy, so you, you lose a bit of bite to the flesh. This is a variety that uh, it was uh, um, very famous at the beginning of the uh, uh, 1900. Uh, it was uh, really uh, sought after from all the restaurants. It was grown in the area of Montreal. And then uh, when other commercial variety easier to grow came along, uh, it just disappeared and they thought they actually lost the seeds. Um, but then uh, you can research, there's a backstory, but somebody, and, uh, if I remember correctly, they just found it uh, in an old seed uh, collection and um, they were able to, to bring it back to the public so that everybody can grow it. Um, one thing about this melon is my favorite. It's definitely my favorite. I tried so many melon over the years. One of these melon harvest at the perfect time. It's, it, it beats them all. I understand why they used to pay a fortune for a slice. Back in the beginning of the 1900s, I think they calculated this would cost more than like uh, the fanciest of dessert if you wanted a slice of this melon. Um, it's very difficult to grow. It has a kind of a character of its own. Uh, some years it just doesn't decide to, to set fruit. Uh, and some years, or some years the production is very bad this year. It's definitely good because I have like I say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight melons from two plants. It's even too much, uh, but they got so entangled and it started to set fruit so late that I couldn't catch, catch, it in, uh, catch it in time to understand which melon came from which plant. And so I was afraid to remove all the melons from the same plant because I would have liked to have just two melons to give them even a better chance. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at this melon. So like I say, you can start to see um, the age of the melon getting, you know, ready to harvest. And if we look, well, you, you can also push a little on the bottom to see if there's any give. But if you look up here, you can start to see again the age on the vine. So getting dry, but look how it's, if I pull it, oh, there you go. This is, I think it's almost like full slip because I'm really not pulling that much and it's coming. So maybe I could have harvested a week ago. No, maybe, yeah, maybe a week ago, but. Oh, this is a nice heavy one too. That's a nice specimen. Beautiful. And uh, if you smell this end, you can smell the, the cantaloupe ready. I don't know this. Yeah, yeah, even even from this, all around it smell. So it's perfect stage. Let's go open it. This is a green flesh. Okay, so let's cut it open. There's a slight, slight give here but it's quite hard. So if I was just basing on this, I wouldn't have harvested. But clearly, as you saw, how it slipped from the vine, he decided to be ready. So green flashed, that's what we want to look. We're going to see, and then we'll taste it. Oh yeah. That's perfect. Look at the, the seeds fully mature. You can see them. And one per, uh, 
one thing about this melon that I saw that you have to harvest them. You can't let it go past this stage. You see this orange part? It's funny, it's the same color as a regular cantaloupe. Anyway, as this seed pulp here get more mature and mature, the orange is actually going to come to this stage. And you lose the particularity of this melon. It starts to taste like a bland, overripe, regular cantaloupe. At this stage, at this stage where it's when you need it. So let's see if I can get a piece and have a taste. It doesn't, but it, it, it smells like a Canterbury, but it has not uh, such a strong smell like other variety, like Annie's Pocket. And those smell on the, they smell strong, but then they don't taste as well. So let's give it a taste. Mm. Yes. Yes, that's why it's my favorite man. It's a, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it, it's like a, the same cantaloupe taste. It's not like something uh, different, but there's almost like a hint of bubble gum. Anyway, everybody should try to grow this, even if, but don't expect, you know, good result every year, because it's very, very annoying to grow. Alright, I'll go finish it. Thanks for watching. Take care.